This video is a companion to the Kickstarter on the topic of preemption. The video will probably be most valuable if you watch it after you've read the Kickstarter and the user's guide in the casebook. Preemption is a modern term for a pretty old idea. Namely, any state law that unduly conflicts with a federal law will be invalid as a result of the Supremacy Clause. The Supremacy Clause is a structural limit on state power. Remember, structural limits typically decide who decides. So if Congress has acted in a permissible area, then Congress gets to decide, and not state or local governments. The supremacy idea is easy. The tricky part is deciding when a state law conflicts enough with a federal law to be invalid. And as with any doctrine, the first step is to identify whether we even have a preemption problem. This may be stating the obvious, but it's important to recognize. For there to be a conflict between federal and state law, there needs to be some law at both levels. There needs to be a state law, and there needs to be a federal statute or regulation. If your facts don't involve any state law, then there is nothing to be preempted. And if your facts don't involve any federal law, then there is nothing to do the preempting. Now this might happen if Congress never passed a law, or if it passed a law that was later found unconstitutional. In these scenarios, the state law might be unconstitutional for some other reason, but not because it has been preempted. All of this means that the mere possibility that either level of government could enact a law is not enough for there to be preemption. As we know, the federal government has power to act only regarding certain enumerated subjects, while the states have power to enact laws on any subject. This means that there may be areas of concurrent power, where both governments have authority to pass similar kinds of laws. Anyone who has paid both federal and state taxes on a gallon of gas or on their annual income knows that concurrent federal and state laws are quite common. As a result, it would be wrong to think that state governments are forbidden to act in those areas where the federal government has enumerated power. The states may act as they see fit, but they'll face a limit if they pass laws that are inconsistent with actually enacted federal statutes or regulations. With that introduction out of the way, let's now consider when a state law will in fact be preempted. We can use as our example Hillman v. Moretta, which is a U.S. Supreme Court case from 2013. Our story begins with Warren, who has a job with a federal agency. Under a federal statute that was first passed in the 1950s, Warren gets life insurance as a fringe benefit of his employment. The statute specifies that the death benefit should be paid to the person that the employee designates as the beneficiary on a federal form. As an exercise, you might want to pause the video right here and figure out which enumerated power, or powers, Congress would have relied on to pass this law. Back to Warren. He filled out the federal form, and he listed his spouse, Judy, as his beneficiary. But Warren and Judy got divorced in 1998. Warren then remarried to a woman named Jacqueline, but he never updated his federal insurance form. That continued to list Judy as the beneficiary. Warren died unexpectedly in 2008. So at that point, the insurer was obligated under federal law to pay the death benefit to Judy. This result created some inconsistencies with some states' marital property laws, which would usually give the spouse at the time of death a right to collect life insurance that was part of fringe benefits. So Virginia dealt with this inconsistency by enacting a state law. Under the Virginia law, if the life insurance benefits are paid to a former spouse, then the new spouse is entitled to recover the money from that former spouse. So relying on the Virginia law, Jacqueline sued Judy, and Judy objected that the Virginia law was preempted by federal law. So that's our preemption problem. 
At this point, you can pause the video and consider whether the state law will be preempted under any of these concepts. It's quite possible that a state law might be preempted under more than one category. But let's continue with express preemption. Now, this only occurs if Congress explicitly includes some preempting language in a statute. Here's the statute from the Hillman case. Pause the video for a moment to read it over. The statute indicates a few things. First, Congress recognized that there might be conflicting state laws, and it wanted to clarify a desire to preempt some of them. Second, Congress has explicitly said that it does not intend to occupy the entire field of life insurance. States can pass all kinds of laws about life insurance. The only limit is that those laws can't be inconsistent with federal insurance contracts, so it's not the entire field. And that gives rise to our third point. Congress hasn't given any particularly precise instructions about which kinds of state laws are inconsistent. They certainly haven't said that a law allowing a new spouse to sue a former spouse to recover insurance proceeds is preempted. I mean, realistically, Congress can't predict all possible inconsistent state laws, including ones that haven't even been dreamed up yet. So in effect, this statute is Congress's invitation for courts to use their usual tools of implied preemption to decide, on a case-by-case -case basis, which state laws are inconsistent with particular federal insurance contracts. And those implied preemption theories are the subject of the next video.